Good songs picked out for you tonight, folks. So get a good, comfortable seat on the top rail there, and I'll get the gang gathered around me. In fact, they are gathered around me right now. How about a little duet harmony here? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's what we want. Well, uh, who would like to sing here? I'd like to sing with Steve. You uh, I sure would, Pappy. I wonder how Foggy will like that. Huh? Uh, oh, I don't know. Well, you can sing with me, Pappy. Well, time changes everything. <laughs> there was a time when I thought I'd How would you like to sing, Would He Ride on a Round Up in Heaven? Oh, Pat? I'd like nothing better, Pat. Come on, boy.
was downright pretty, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that was all right. Well, I'll tell you, Skeets, if you get ready to sing a song, I'll tell a little story right now. All right, Pappy, that's a bargain. Well, pick out an old favorite, because this right. is a favorite story of mine. If any of you folks are given to playing practical jokes, I, I got a little story I think might interest you. Quite a few years ago, when I was working at the old Triple X up in Montana, there's a fellow working with us by the name of Neely Bartonson. Now, Neely was a nice fellow, but he was full of practical jokes. Gosh, there was a guy who who wasn't happy until he was giving somebody the miseries of one kind or another. He never meant no harm by it, of course, and Neely didn't. But practical joking was just in his blood, and it had to come out. But well, one time, that fellow pulled the fangs out of a half a dozen assorted rattlesnakes and put them in Wendy Crawford's bunk, and when Wendy come in that night and swung into that bunk, you'd have thought the end of the world had come. <laughs> yeah, he nearly died of fright. And what's more, he flung rattlesnakes all over the bunkhouse. In fact, he had us all jumping out windows. Another time, that doggone Neely nailed Big Bill Cypher's boots to the floor while he was asleep. And the next morning, Bill jumped out of bed, just slipped into them boots and started to take a step and fell flat on his face. I'll never forget. <laughs> <laughs> but there was one guy Neely worked on more than anybody else. That was a bald-headed fellow named Steve Workman. He was always figuring something out for Steve, either painting his bald head different colors or sticking feathers on it with glue or something or other. Steve was a patient sort of a fellow for a while, but pretty soon it reached a point where he just couldn't stand the sight of Neely at all. Oh, he'd laugh on the surface, but inside you could just tell he was burning up. Well, one afternoon when Neely was gone, Steve come in and said he really fixed up a practical joke to end all practical jokes. And Neely was going to be the victim. Steve said he'd gotten a hold of a tame grizzly bear and had put him out in the woodshed. Now, when he said tame grizzly bear, I kind of wondered, because I don't believe there's such a thing as a tame grizzly. But Steve swooped. <laughs> he swooped out there and said, in all good manner, and said, yes, sir. He swore him down that he'd uh, bought him from a bunch of Indians. So we figured it was all right then. And that night after chow, Neely pulled out a little box that he handed to Steve, and he told him, he said, that box holds a picture of the most beautiful woman in the world. Well, naturally, Neely expected something, but when he opened that box, anyway, he <laughs> he really got it. A cloud of itching powder flew all over him. Well, sir, Neely liked to die laughing, and the rest of us roared at it, too. Steve laughed himself, in fact, and then he said, Neely, i got something for you out in the woods yet. I dare you to go out and get it. Neely just grinned and said, sure, I'll get it. And what's more, I'll bring it in here if you want me to. Then he closed the door and went out. A few minutes, we heard a lot of screaming and growling. Steve just sat there grinning. Then when the noise died down, we all went out to the woodshed. It looked like a young cyclone had hit the place. Windows had broke out, doors shattered, and kindling wood all over the place. And what was most important, there was no Neely around. We all looked at Steve, and after about a minute, you know, he said, Well, doggone, you know, maybe them Indians pulled a little over my eyes. Maybe that was a wild grizzly after all. <laughs> yes, sir. Maybe them Indians put one over on me. And then he sort of grinned like and turned and walked off, shaking his head, chuckling to beat the band. <laughs> <laughs> now that song, Skeeter. All right, Pappy, I told you so. So your new love left you feeling fat and blue. And it broke your heart in two to see him go. Now you know the lonely nights that I went through. And I'm glad that I can say I told you so. When you cry yourself to sleep, remember me. Think of all the things I told you long ago. You know how it feels to be a used to be. And I'm glad that I can say I told you so. Now that someone broke your heart, you realize. That the time has come to read just what you saw Or somebody else told you the same old lie And I'm glad that I can say I told you so When you see me with a smile upon my face Then the sadness of an aching heart you know I'll be happy with another in your place and I'm glad that I can say I told you so. When you miss the happiness you'll never find, 
think of me each time the bitter teardrop flow. But you had no misery on the part of mine. And I'm glad that I can say I told you so. coming we would sure appreciate it me and the boys like to have you around when we're singing our songs and having our little song fest so come again won't you this is pappy cheshire talking to the whole gang and sally saying so long everybody so long Hello.